Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. Delighted to be showing you Hans Zimmer Strings. By far our most ambitious project to date and a collaboration with the man himself. 344 string players recorded at Air Studios playing the finest instruments in the world. Now I'm really excited to be in my shed working this into my workflow. And it's very convenient because the guys down south have asked me to write the music for the trailer linked below. So without further ado, let's just have a look at the trailer without any music whatsoever. So what's interesting about it is the cuts are actually quite fast, although the transitions are very, very slow. After kind of about 20 years of doing this, I've uh, developed a kind of sixth sense, as do most composers, for how fast this is running. So here come the faster cuts. That's the kind of speed I'm feeling. I'm kind of hitting the cuts. This is amazingly long part, this bit. So my first initial idea was to basically be arrogantly minimal and maybe just a single note. But then as I started working with the uh, material, I developed more of a sense of occasion. And then I thought, well, listen, th this is just a total one off. We're not going to do this again. So why not kind of go gothic? But what I started with, and I think this is going to become a modern classic, is the Carleno Tratto, which is where they get the back of the bow and it's not the hitting, it's actually bowing. Now, normally it creates a very scratchy, nasally sound, but with 60 cellos, it creates something like a sea of silk. So I'm just controlling expression and modulation here. So I knew what I definitely wanted to do was have a drone going throughout. So I started with a... Amazing, such an engaging sound. So we've got the 60 cellos, uh, Colenia Tratto, and then I double tracked that with 60 violins doing Colenia Tratto, which is also awesome sound. And you can hear the frailty of that, but because there's 60 of them, there's a kind of tonal support, so you really can. So what I did is just do a simple sustain all the way through the track like that, and then there's a bit of extra interest that comes in a little further down. Then instead of writing on a flautanda, which is what I usually do, I actually wrote on the cellos, this super soft consordino, and it's just quite phenomenal sound. I mean, this is up in the gods. Cellos uh, mean quite phenomenal. They almost sound like a, a humming. Almost kind of like humming sopranos. So anyway, this was the patch that I wrote with. So then what I did is I brought in the, so I did the violins and viola parts, albeit all on the cellos. This is not a one for the purists. And uh, I then brought in the cello part uh, with a flout hand down. What's lovely about this sound Just 
hear the activity of all of those bows, quite stunning. Later on, we've got the violins long coming, just the standard longs. So let's have a listen to those. And we've got those on an automation, just softly. reverb on that particular track I decided to go for. So let's just have a quick check of that. I'm using just the VSS3 large warm hall 3.3 seconds. Uh, let's have a look at the basses that I used. So I used the Saltasto basses which again would give kind of quite a weak signal just a few basses but with 24 it's like a distant murmuring Welsh choir. And then later on, I faded in just the standard bass longs without the octave. And then because I am a little bit of a tart, I put the EXS sine wave. Now EXS, if you're not a Logic user, is basically their uh, in-house sampler. And when you load it up with no samples in, it has this great, great kind of under bass. Uh, I've bought expensive synths to try and replace the EXS, but it's something about the EXS that does it best. So that's the only non bit of Typhon or Hans Zimmer strings, must get used to that, uh, that I'm using. And again, I've got some automation on that so you can see it. So it's just coming in gently there, just at that kind of climax there. So then I also, for fits and giggles, doubled up the, the whole kind of the, the main right hand pad part with 60 violin Colenio Tratto to add even more interest. amazing patina of activity going on. And then just finally, some firsts, tremolo harmonics. Just to match some stuff going on on the screen. I added some different parts there. Okay, so let's uh, run that down. Let's make that a bit smaller. So that is me working very freely to a fixed tempo of 122 as that finger click suggested. Now what's happening is it's it's not really hitting the cuts in the way, you know, I've got these breaths for the, you know, going down to black. And in general, it all feels like it's just running, the music's running a little bit late. So I'm just going to drag the picture forward a bit, just literally a, a schnufty schnufters. And also I'm going to start the drone a little bit earlier. So let's just have a look at a few of those cuts.
So you can see in general it's fitting a little bit better but not quite hitting those cuts. So the last thing I did was create quite an eccentric tempo map. Now if this was for a live band, just so I didn't lose their respect, I would actually do it with uh, accelerandos and decelerandos. Um, but because it's just 100% samples, I could just go for gold, and it's a very slow piece. And what I also felt, by being really quite extreme between the tempos, it adds to the tension. You don't quite know where you are, but it really kind of hits these beautiful images created by us too. The only mics I used on that uh, were the outriggers, uh, which give it that really broad, the, tr the tree is kind of there sonically. The outriggers, same height, but just that bit wider. And they're certainly the favorites of Andy Blaney and Paul Thompson. So they educated me in the wonders of outriggers, but you know, God, I've got so many different mics to choose from. Especially with these like, the gallery bands and stuff, you've got to throw away your established norms with your mic selection. And as Hans said, you know, what we're trying to do here is create the impossible. It's not about being a purist, it's about taking it to the edge. I think what's really interesting about the band size and the selection of microphones is you can really control the aperture of your writing. Full disclosure, uh, I'm running this Mac and this version of Logic and I'm working with a pre-release beta of Hands and the Strings of 0.5.2. So my first takeaway with working this into my workflow is how unmuddy it sounds, that you can hear individual players, that there's this pattern, it's not just this kind of synthy silk. I think that is particularly the case for the softer, really magical techniques we've been looking at here. And I'll be sure in forthcoming videos to look at the, the kind of louder, more traditional ones. I think the whole team has fallen in love with these soft articulations. So we really will be showing off the full range of the library, including, of course, and how the big knob is going to become your new big friend. See you next time.